Okay, quick rundown on how to actually navigate this project and what we're starting with. Instructions on how to actually download it, get everything installed, get it running are all going to be listed down below. Uh, this video is just easier in text than to try to record a video on that. But I do want to walk you through the project very quickly of what we're, what we're starting with before we actually start working on this project. So all of our code lives in the app directory. I'm using Expo for this example, but it's not required. You can absolutely use normal React Native. I use Expo just because it's easier for everyone to get up and running more quickly, but these exact same concepts apply to whether you're using the React Native CLI or Expo. With that said, once you go into our app directory, our entry point is going to be this index.js. And here is where I have our navigation set up. You can see it's just a basic stack navigator. That's really all it is, it's two stack navigators. And looking at the actual application, you can see we've got a list of items here. Golf corpses don't lie, we can go in there, see details, it'll render a quick little map up here. We can go ahead and log if we found this. And we can also go ahead and create a new demo location. This is a place that has a thing. And then we could set a latitude and longitude. You could set that to just use a current location, save it. And then if we go ahead and refresh it, you'll see that demo location does show up. So this is basically simulating a geocaching application where you can go out somewhere, leave a little token out in the woods or whatever. Someone can go find it, log that they found it, add something to it, so on and so forth. It's a really simple app, but we chose this example, uh, which is actually from React Native by example, a separate course, because this makes sense to uh, actually have offline capabilities because it targets people who would be out in the wilderness without a reliable internet connection. So taking a look back at the code, uh, inside of our components directory, we've just got components that go ahead and actually create these different components that generate our application. We've got a button, a form, which is just some inputs. Uh, we've got a list, which has our styling for our list here. We've also got navigation, which is going to go ahead and show us a few navigation options, a close button, an add button, things like that. Looking at our screens, we've got a screen for each screen represented in our application. We've got a list screen, which will go ahead and fetch the data from our API. We've got a detail screen, which will represent the details, render our map, and allow us to log things. And then we've got our create screen. Create screen is going to allow us to actually input data and then go ahead, post to our API, and create a new item. Speaking of our API, we actually interact with that through our util slash api.js. And in here, it'll go ahead and point to a glitch, a little server that I made on glitch.me. Uh, that way we can all work with it and we can easily turn on and turn off our internet connections to simulate being online and offline. So at a high level, that is the project. Again, to get up and running, just follow the instructions I've got down below this video. Take a few moments, look through the code, get comfortable. It's all very uh, straightforward stuff. If you're looking to add offline capabilities, I'm confident you're kind of, you'll be able to read this code and understand what's going on pretty easily. But once you've got the application running, you're familiar with this code. Let's go ahead and actually start adding offline capability to this application.